free energy. That's right, energy has been imprisoned and it's time to free energy. Okay, maybe not that kind of free energy. We're talking about Gibbs free energy, delta G of a reaction. Both enthalpy, delta H, and entropy, delta S, combine in determining whether a reaction will take place. If both factors are favored, the reaction will be spontaneous. If both factors are unfavored, the reaction won't be spontaneous. If one's favored and the other isn't, then it can be spontaneous above or below a certain temperature. Now, so far we've just been talking about it in terms of, well, if one is bigger than the other, but we really haven't thrown any numbers into it yet. And now it's time to throw in the numbers. Gibbs free energy is the energy that's available by a system to do work. What does that mean? Well, you know when you're mowing the lawn, you're expending energy. Now, over time, your energy that's available to do work goes down because you're getting tired. You're getting more and more tired. Now, in a chemical reaction, either you can start with less energy available to do work and end up with more energy available to do work. Tell me, when does that happen? Usually never. That would be non-spontaneous or the amount of energy available to do work can go down over time, which is what usually happens. That would be a spontaneous change. So a reaction is going to draw upon both enthalpy and entropy to do work. And for a change to be spontaneous, there has to be an overall decrease in the amount of energy available to do work. And we call that energy available to do work Gibbs free energy, we give the change in energy available to do work, the sign delta G, so a negative delta G would be spontaneous. So negative delta G would be a spontaneous reaction, a positive delta G would be a non-spontaneous reaction. Now to find out the information you need to solve these problems, we're going to use accelerated enriched table C. The energies for the synthesis of given compounds from their elements. I happen to have that right here. These compounds were formed through a synthesis reaction. For example, aluminum oxide is formed from its elements aluminum and oxygen. So the synthesis of aluminum oxide has a negative delta H of formation and a negative delta G of formation. What this means is that forming aluminum oxide from its elements is spontaneous because it has a negative delta G. It's also exothermic because it has a negative delta H. On the other hand, the formation of C2H4 from its elements has a positive delta G of formation. That means forming C2H4 from its elements is not spontaneous and requires a constant input of energy. As you can see, the formation is also endothermic. If you want to find the energy of decomposition or breaking up these compounds back into their elements, simply reverse the signs, since after all it is the reverse process. So if synthesizing aluminum oxide has a negative 1581 delta G, then decomposing aluminum oxide back into its elements would have a positive 1581 delta G. Heat of formation reverse it and you'll get energies of decomposition. This can also be used to do Hess's law of heat summation which will not be covered in AE chemistry. So are the following changes spontaneous? The synthesis of HF. Well HF has a negative delta G of formation so synthesizing it will be spontaneous since so it has a negative delta G of formation. Decomposing KCl well, KCl has a negative delta G of formation, therefore decomposing it would have a positive delta G of formation. That would not be spontaneous. Forming KCl is spontaneous, decomposing it wouldn't be. To synthesize aluminum oxide, the synthesis of the compound has a negative delta G. That's spontaneous. Decomposing NO2 gas. Well, NO2 has a delta G of formation of positive 51, which means decomposing it would be negative 51. Negative delta G, spontaneous. Synthesis of CO2. CO2 has a delta G of synthesis of negative 394. Synthesis would be spontaneous. So if the delta G is negative, it's spontaneous. Delta G is positive, it's not spontaneous. 
And this information here is for the synthesis of these elements. So if you want to get the energies of decomposition, you just simply reverse the signs. In order to calculate delta G, we need to combine the factors delta H and T delta S. But we need to do it in such a way that the factors work out. As you remember, to be spontaneous, nature favors a decrease in potential energy. And nature favors an increase in entropy. The temperature is here because entropy is dependent upon temperature. Delta H is measured in kilojoules. Delta S is measured in kilojoules per Kelvin. Delta G is measured in kilojoules. Therefore, to make it kilojoules on all sides, we have Kelvin here so that Kelvins cancel out and we have kilojoules on both sides. The question is, what do we do here? Well, a spontaneous reaction, one where both factors are favored, delta G will be negative. So a negative and a positive, what do you have to do to make it always come out to be a negative value? Well, a negative plus a positive, a negative plus a positive, well, sometimes that's negative and sometimes it's positive. It's like if I had negative one and positive two, that would come out to a positive number. So plus doesn't always work, so we can't use plus. How about minus? If we take a negative and subtract a positive, yeah, that'll always be negative, right? Negative one minus any positive number will always be a bigger negative value than negative one. So therefore, this is the way it works out. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Or as one of my first, one of my very first chemistry students ever came up with this amazing mnemonic, George had two shoes. George had two shoes. Now why is it had two shoes and not has two shoes? Because you subtracted them. George had two shoes. You subtracted the two shoes. So he had the two shoes. And that's how you can remember this formula. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S.